a penguin. My goal is to make like maybe three sets of these eyes and um, the little beak. And then if there's time, maybe I'll make them move and jitter kind of left to right. And that's the spirit of your random walk assignment, the ticklish penguin assignment due this Friday. So notice um, we review, we have a canvas being drawn, a background that's grayish being drawn and set up. And then here's the main part of the code inside draw. We have the white parts of the eyes, we have the iris, and then we have the yellow beak. That's a triangle. All that should be familiar. We did a lot of programs that involve drawing. And I'm trying to fix the space up. There we go. Okay, looks a little funny. So um, let's say um, for most of your assignments so far, I imagine a lot of you copy and pasted this code and then maybe like added, uh, let's say, 50 pixels to the x coordinate, like so. Maybe you even did the math uh, right next to it or replace these numbers to get another copy. Yeah? That's how you got things to repeat. Oh, the beak's a little bit harder. Plus 50, plus 50, plus 50. There. So you got to see it kind of in real time. It, it duplicated. I now have a second set of eyes and the beak next to it. Yeah? Let me show you an easier way to go about doing this. Instead of copying and pasting all this code, modifying these numbers uh, every so often, we're going to make our own uh, penguin function. We're going to make our own uh, block, let's say, if you want to talk in game lab speak. So what I'll do is type in function. That's a keyword. Notice it turned purple. And this one's going to be draw penguin. Some variables are going to go in here, but um, let's figure out what we need first. Um, we'll just copy and paste once this code. And now, um, just to show you how it works, if I replace that first, uh, let's see, what do I have? Yeah, if I replace the first set of eyes on the left, which is up here, I delete all this. The second set of eyes should disappear. Great. And if I want it to reappear again, now instead of copying and pasting all that code, I can just go draw penguin. And it reappears, yes, back on the left. So this is like substitution property. Um, if you want to be formal about math, um, this function, when the computer sees it, OK, what does it mean to draw a penguin? It goes down, looks at your code, and it says, oh, this is what it means to draw a penguin. So far, so good? So now, like if I wanted to draw another set of eyes right on top of it, I could go draw a penguin again, just like how I was drawing an ellipse. There are three sets of eyes. Two of them are right on top of each other, and other pairs on the right. Now, to make this more useful, perhaps let's say um, I want to modify this so that it takes in a number. And what's this number going to be? Let's have it be our. Uh, what's it going to be? Let's have it be like an x coordinate. Uh, now, the confusing thing is. Um, if I have that be related to an x coordinate, notice like the ellipse have their x coordinate, the circles have their x coordinate, the, the big white ones, and then the beak has its own x coordinate. Um, so instead, why don't I have this be like the change in x? Change, oops, change, come on, change in x. So this displaces it every so often either to the left or to the right. So just like before, how I move these eyes to the right, I'm going to now use that variable. Now that I added it in, in here, I can change the x-coordinates like so. So after 140, that's the x-coordinate of my ellipse. My cursor is not showing up. Maybe I plus x, plus change in x. Here, I do plus change in x. Here, plus change in x. Here, plus change in x. Here, we have to do it three times because there's three x coordinates here. And notice when I made that change to all the x coordinates, I have my original position and then I'm displacing it a little bit. Um, but previously, I didn't tell it how much to move it either left or right by. So that's why the left set of eyes disappeared. So now my, my function, draw penguin, my custom function, my custom block, um, it 
doesn't know what it means if nothing's here. You have to give it a number. So now it does some calculating. It adds 10 pixels over. If I was zero, added in zero, notice that's on, maybe I'll make this a bit more extreme. This one's uh, 50. So then it's over right on, oh, that's a bad idea, uh, 70. So the third set of eyes here, the original set of eyes are here. And maybe I wanted to another set of eyes draw a penguin. Penguin. Maybe I'll have it be negative uh, 40. So it's going to move to the left. So now I have four sets of eyes. All right, Mr. Chen, that's great. You can repeat a bunch of eyes and a beak, so what? Um, we're in the animation unit. Let's make a move. So just like before, we go through um, the three steps of uh, using a variable. You have to declare it. Let's call this be um, var uh, jitter. Jit, jit, jitter. And let's start it, maybe uh, declare it up here. Um, notice it's at the top. Then we'll initialize it, so that's giving it a value. Jitter is equal to one. And now here's the fun part. Um, jitter equals random, I think it's number, correct? Is that game lab or is it, I think it's just lower kit? Just random, okay, thank you. Just random, and now let's say we go from zero to jitter. And then on this fourth set of eyes, let's see if I could penguin jitter like that. Perhaps it's a bit small. Maybe here I will, wait, did I do this right? Start at 10, this will cause larger movement. Let me comment out this stuff. I think it's moving. So right now I'm using my variable. I'm trying to have it introduce some more change. I think it happens a bunch of times and then it stops. What if I had a negative jitter? It draws itself like three times. So I'm trying to get it to move side to side. I'm not seeing it at the moment. Perhaps if I draw the background once, does that work? Uh, oh, right. So what's, the, yeah, I see it now. So right now I'm resetting it and then it's just one number because I'm setting jitter equal to itself again. So if I wanted to move left and right, perhaps I want another variable here, um, jitter, and then here's my uh, random max among. And then down here, jitter is going to be used in draw, random maximum is going to be used here. And then jitter equals random maximum underscore. Maximum. I think this will be better. Okay, there it goes. A little bit fast, but that's okay. It's like the, uh, what is it? It's, the move is called double team in Pokemon. And if you're a Naruto fan, then it's like shadow clones, right? They're moving around so fast. Okay. So there's your demo on using a function. Um, we went through one stage where we copy and pasted, and then the second, chain, uh, second stage, we tried to make it a bit more useful by adding in some variables. Things you should pay attention to is the syntax. Notice it's the function keyword. You give it a name. And over here, um, you can add in as many variables as you want to help you either change the color, change the position, and to get your random walk going, you want something that uses the random function, like so. Those are essential parts to your ticklish penguin assignment. I hope with the use of functions, you'll copy and paste less. Uh, I'm gonna change this name with function.
and I'm going to post this code. Um, you're welcome to build on top of it or modify it if so desired. And that ends my screencast for today.